The topic of the month for October 2019 is pilots and medications. In this presentation, we'll talk a little bit about a recent GAJSC and FAA study that features some interesting findings with respect to pilots and medications. We'll talk generally about flying while medicating and the problems associated with taking multiple drugs. Finally, we'll offer some tips for safe flying while on medications and we'll discuss a case study. In a 2011 study from the FAA's CAMI Toxicology Lab, drugs, medications were found in 570 pilots, 42%, from 1,353 total fatal pilots tested. Most of the pilots with positive drug results, 511, 90%, were flying under CFR Part 91. While there were a couple of instances of recreational drugs, the majority were prescription or over the counter medications. Antihistamines were the most commonly found. Left undetermined was the extent of pilot impairment, if any, due to drug use. But the issue is cause for concern for several reasons. So what's the problem? First of all, we all know that some medications may compromise a pilot's ability to control the aircraft and or adversely affect judgment and decision making. What's not so obvious is it's difficult for investigators to say for sure that pilot performance was compromised because the effect of drugs and medications varies widely among individuals. In addition, post-mortem redistribution of a substance creates some confusion as to the actual blood levels prior to the accident. The amount of a substance may vary considerably in different tissues. A less obvious problem poses the question, what pre-existing physical condition requires the use of medication in the first place? It's not unusual to find that pilots are evaluated and treated for conditions that are not revealed to their aviation medical examiners. In those cases, an AME doesn't have an opportunity to review the complete medical history of diagnoses and treatments for some of the pilots they examine. There's also the issue of drug interactions, but we'll get to that a little bit later. Fortunately, the FDA requires standard labeling for prescription and over-the-counter OTC medications. But are those labeling standards primarily for patients or healthcare providers or both? As it turns out, the correct answer is it depends. OTC labeling is for the medication user, while prescription labeling is primarily for healthcare providers. Food and Drug Administration, FDA, OTC labeling requirements are directed to users, so be sure to read the label before you medicate and fly. The standard OTC label will tell you the active ingredients, purpose, and uses for the drug, as well as warnings and directions for use. Note, in this example, we're looking at an antihistamine that we might take to address cold symptoms. Note the warnings of drowsiness and those associated with driving a motor vehicle or operating machinery. Do you think it would be safe to fly while using this drug? How long will it reside in your system? How soon would you be safe to fly after stopping the drug? You won't find the answers to any of those questions on the label. This might be a good time to consult your AME. A word on OTC sleep aids and cough medications. Sleep aids obviously are intended to promote sleep, but their effects, resembling a hangover, may persist into several days. Not a good idea if you're going flying. Also, tolerance to active ingredients builds quickly, so you'll find you're taking more and more medicine to achieve the same result. All OTC medications are intended for temporary use. Taking them for longer than the recommended time may mask symptoms of a significant or serious underlying medical condition. If you've been taking a medication that precludes flying, how long must you wait after ceasing the medication before you return to the air? This is a good question for your AME to answer, but the general rule is to wait until five times the dosage interval has passed. For example, if you take a medication four times a day, six hour intervals, you should wait at least 30 hours before resuming pilot duties. Prescription meds are a little bit different. They're often stronger versions of what you can get over the counter. 
Many carry a warning to not operate motor vehicles or perform tasks that require alertness. Remember, boats and planes are considered motor vehicles, and piloting an airplane certainly requires alertness. Prescription drugs are often prescribed individually, sometimes by different healthcare providers. Interactions may not be addressed or may be unknown. Unlike those for OTC products, the labeling standards for prescription drugs are primarily for the use of medical professionals, so they're not as helpful to the lay public. Be sure to remind your prescribing healthcare provider that you are a pilot and how the drug is likely to affect your motor skills. Per the Food and Drug Administration, FDA, the acceptable names are prescribing information, package insert, professional labeling, direction circular, and package circular. This information is intended for health professionals and is rarely given to the patient, although it is readily available online. Currently, it consists of a written document included in the medication box or attached to a container, but the FDA is trying to change this to electronic format, highly detailed information in technical language and in a standard format. The FAA maintains a list of many medications that may preclude the issuance of any medical certificate or should not be taken while in flight status. The lists of medications in this section are not meant to be all-inclusive or comprehensive, but rather address the most common concerns. The easiest way to address the list is to search for Do Not Issue, Do Not Fly. You'll be directed to the webpage shown here. There are other lists available to members of pilot organizations and to the public. If you don't see your medication on the list, or if you have any questions, call your AME or regional flight surgeon for the latest information. For your regional flight surgeon search, regional flight surgeon contact information. Look into any medicine cabinet and you're likely to find a mixture of OTC and prescription meds. Who's responsible for assessing the effects and possible drug interactions? Making those assessments is something they don't teach us in pilot school, so this may also be a good time to seek some professional help. Before you do that, let's talk about prescription drugs alone or in combination. Does your prescribing doctor know you fly? Maybe a more suitable drug could be prescribed if your doctor knows you're a pilot. Even more importantly, does your AME know about all the drugs you take and the conditions for which you take them. Combining prescription and OTC drugs introduces another challenge, the self-medicating pilot. Once again, it's safer to consult your AME and or pharmacist before adding OTC meds to your system. We're not going to address recreational drugs here. We all know that flying is about the best recreation there is. It's not safe and not legal to fly under the influence, although we will look at one case from the GAJSC study. We'll discuss it with respect to the PAVE checklist that's familiar to most, if not all of us. I think you'll find the case study illuminating. The case involved a private pilot with just under 1,000 hours total time, with 44 of those hours in the TBM 700. During approach to Runway 9 at Cobb County Field near Atlanta, Georgia, the tower controller instructed the pilot to perform an S-turn three miles from the runway. The pilot initiated the S-turn to the left, and after turning back to the right towards the runway to complete the other half of the turn, the controller advised the pilot that he did not need to finish the maneuver and could turn on to final approach. The last recorded ground speed was 89 knots when the pilot banked the airplane sharply to the left. Witnesses stated that the airplane seemed to do a wing over onto its back, and go straight down. Subsequent flight simulation tests revealed that while making a steep turn and not adding power, as the bank angle increased, the airspeed would decrease and the airplane would enter an aerodynamic stall. The National Transportation Safety Board determines the probable causes of this accident as follows. The pilot's failure to maintain airspeed during final approach, resulting in an aerodynamic stall. As an additional comment, they also stated, it is unclear what role, if any, the medication or the condition for which it might have been used played in the accident. Here is a larger view of the area. The flight path is not to scale, but you get the idea. 
toxicology testing indicated that the pilot had been using tramadol, a prescription painkiller with potentially impairing effects. The pilot had not reported its use on his most recent application for Airman Medical Certificate approximately 20 months prior to the accident. It is unclear what role, if any, the medication or the condition for which it might have been used played in the accident. Alfuzosin, a medicine to reduce symptoms from an enlarged prostate, bisoprolol, a beta blocker for blood pressure control, quinine, although not FDA approved, is taken by some for arthritis and nighttime leg cramps. Azetamib, simvastatin, used to lower elevated blood cholesterol, and tramadol, for moderate to severe pain, were found in the toxicology study. Tramadol carries a warning not to operate motor vehicles or potentially hazardous machinery. Of these, only bisoprolol and azetamib simvastatin were known to the pilot's aviation medical examiner and the FAA. The National Transportation Safety Board determined the probable causes of this accident as follows. The pilot's failure to maintain the airspeed during final approach, resulting in an aerodynamic stall. As an additional comment, they also stated, It is unclear what role, if any, the medication or the condition for which it might have been used played in the accident. Finally, here are some tips for safe flying while taking prescribed or OTC medications. Consult your AME before flying while using prescription and or OTC drugs. Make sure your AME knows about all the drugs you take and the medical conditions requiring their use. Let your prescribing doctor know that you are a pilot. Ask about adverse effects associated with drug combinations. In between doctor visits, you're self-assessing your condition before each flight. Ground yourself when you're not fit to fly. Special thanks to the following for their contributions to this presentation. Please direct any questions to your local FAST team representative. Narration by Bradford Wood, National Outreach Manager. There's nothing like the feeling you get when you know you're playing your A game, and in order to do that, you need a good coach. So fly regularly with a CFI who will challenge you to review what you know, explore new horizons, and to always do your best. Of course, you'll have to dedicate time and money to your proficiency program, but it's well worth it for the peace of mind that comes with confidence. Vince Lombardi, the famous football coach, said, Practice does not make perfect. Only perfect practice makes perfect. For pilots, that means flying with precision. On course, on altitude, on speed, all the time. Be sure to document your achievement in the Wings Proficiency Program. It's a great way to stay on top of your game and keep your flight review current. Your presence here shows that you are a vital member of our general aviation safety community. The high standards you keep and the examples you set are a great credit to you and to GA. Thank you for attending.